I'm Lee Camp, and this is the Moment of Clarity Show. Coming to you live from... Where the fuck are we? Everything is in readiness now, and history is in the making. Observers at sea impatiently await the blast. Zero hour rapidly approaches, and cameras start to go. You know one of the most powerful weapons the government can use against us? It's not missiles or gas or propaganda, or even threatening to release all the nude TSA body scanner images of you as Christmas cards. Nope. It's boredom. When evil stuff is boring, people don't give a shit. Boring evil is the worst. People, people care less than Vladimir Putin at an Amnesty International convention. I'm about to tell you about a highly secretive trade agreement the U.S. is entering into that will fuck with the safety of our food, the strength of our environmental regulations, and will protect foreign corporations from our laws. And that's just the friendly stuff. It's called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And see? See? I knew it. You fell asleep. Wake up, motherfucker! God damn it. Every time I try and explain this to people, they face plant right in their French onion soup. Maybe I should stop giving them French onion soup before. Though you may not drive a great big cat. TPP, as it's called, would be the largest quote-unquote free trade agreement in the world. And free trade sounds good, doesn't it? This is America. We love freedom. We're all about freedom. Free trade sounds like it involves a world of cotton candy and lollipops, a world where people are happy and Star Wars never had its corpse dragged through the mud, and that mud is filled with diarrhea. What? It's called free trade because once it's passed, American workers are free of jobs, and corporations are free of regulations, and Wall Street is free of restrictions. 2.5 million jobs have been lost due to NAFTA alone, the North American Free Trade Agreement. And most importantly, under TPP, foreign corporations won't even have to abide by our laws. If they feel something is unfair, they can take their complaint to an international tribunal. Just like the bad guys in Star Wars. I find your lack of faith disturbing. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Lee, I'm sick of hearing about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Every day you turn on the news and it's, they're talking about it, they're showing pictures of it, they're asking us whether it's bigger than we thought, whether it could endanger New York City, whether it could have implications for generations to come. And, oh. Wait, that's, that's Kim Kardashian's ass. The reason you haven't heard about TPP is because the negotiations have been largely top secret. And you have to ask yourself, when our elected representatives are negotiating a trade deal that will fuck with all of our lives, why should we be kept in the dark like a dog on the way to be neutered? Right now, our government is looking straight at us and going, don't worry, we're just going to the park. Just a, just a little ride to the park. We're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna, Chop your balls off or nothing. Everybody hurts. How do you expect America to be competitive with other countries if you're against every trade deal? Not exactly clarity, just cunty. Jeez, Henry, such language. So the be competitive thing, I hate this argument. You hear this argument whenever you talk to anybody about, about unions or about workers. They say, well, how can we be competitive? Well, think about what they're asking us to be competitive with. We're talking child labor. We're talking slave labor. They're literally prisoners put into jail for things like religious beliefs in China who are then forced to work endlessly. 
I mean, there was a note left in a Kmart decoration recently from one of those slave laborers saying, please help me. That's what we're asked to be competitive with? Is that the kind of work we should be doing? <laughs> well, I remember when I worked for a garment factory for union wages. Uh -huh. Offshore plants, Mexico, Puerto Rico, they made less than half of what we did without a union. Oh, yeah, and you were asked to be competitive with that. Exactly. Wait, can I, can I bring something up? Uh, yeah, please, John. If that's the case, uh, we really can't compete with those wages, at, at, according to you, because if everyone else is using it, and including outsourcing a job without any tariffs or taxes on it, what would make a company decide to do that? There is no reason. If you can get cheaper labor, usually that's what they go for. Exactly. That's why I'm arguing against these trade deals that allow them to simply export all of these jobs to, to people that will work for pennies on the dollar in horrible conditions. And it's not just the amount of money they're getting paid. Even if these workers were getting paid the same, it's that these companies, these corporations, are allowed to pollute endlessly and treat them like shit. How are we going to bring the jobs back to America if that's the case? Four words, John. Vote with your wallet. Buy stuff from corporations and companies and factories that have good business practices, that treat their workers well, that pay a living wage. You, you're with me on this one? I'm with you on this one. All right. John, you got anything to add? The same issues that were on the table in the Protect IP Act are now on the table in uh, the negotiations about the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Open Gunkin' Style. I'm sick of the right-wing greed pirates dominating the aggressive use of language to get their way. You know what I mean? Like, it's not called Let Companies Pollute the Skies Act, it's called the Clear Skies Act. And they don't call it earned benefits, they call it entitlements. So it's about time we created some words of our own. Recently, Walmart tried everything they could to plant their fat ass near the site of famous ancient pyramids in Mexico. The city officials said no again and again and again, and ultimately Walmart bribed a lower level official to quietly change the zoning map. Walmart did not give up their evil pursuit, no matter how many roadblocks they came across. So they had good dick to -itiveness. It's like stick to but when you're being a dick. So remember that, kids. dick to -itiveness. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I'm going to have to put my pants back on. This is the interview part where we talk to amazing people. This is going to be Dr. Margaret Flowers and Kevin Zeese, who are, I'm proud to say, friends of mine, but also great activists and know a lot about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So let's see if they can drop some knowledge on us. Hey, guys. Hey, how you doing? So why the TPP? Yeah, we try to do is get to the root causes of the problems that we face. And um, we've talked a lot about this kind of corporate coup in the United States. We look at the TPP as a global corporate coup. It's going to shift power to corporations so that they have more control than individual nations have. It's going to undermine consumer, environmental, labor laws. It's going to drive wages in the United States down further. It's going to ex export jobs overseas. It's a it's a the largest trade agreement in history. This is a right. big step for the corporate government to take control of the world. This is you know, when you have a trade tribunal regimen that becomes the world law on how trade occurs. That's essentially saying corporations are in charge of world government. It's going to be the corporate global uh, coup. And we need to stop it now. We can do that. Why is there so little mainstream coverage of the TPP? I mean, I feel like with NAFTA, there was at least some coverage. Like people, people were talking about it in the public sphere. Because now the people know that NAFTA was a really bad thing. It is absolutely true that NAFTA was a mistake. And the, I've seen the effects of it. And so they're on to the game and, and they'll see that the TPP is NAFTA on steroids. As you know, many people on the left still believe to some extent in Obama. And I'm, I'm just wondering, in your opinion, is this the type of thing where uh, Obama is actively pushing for the TPP? Or is it more like he's, he's throwing a bone to corporations and, you know, I'll look the other way and let them have their profits? This is much more than a bone. This is throwing a whole cow to the corporation. This, I mean, this, this is like a giant, and yes, Obama is pushing this. We've directed our teams to finalize this agreement in the coming year. 
Uh, it is an ambitious goal, but uh, we are optimistic that we can get it done. I mean, it began under Bush, but he did nothing with it. When Obama came in, he started the negotiations up again. He was at a Democratic convention saying he's going to stop outsourcing jobs, while at the same time they were negotiating a TPP in Leesburg, Virginia, which is going to be a major outsourcer job. This is Obama as worse. This is corporatism. This is Wall Street. This is big business taking control of the global economy. And Obama is the main facilitator of this. He is pushing this aggressively. So why is it that you two don't want America to be competitive? <laughs> don't you want us to be competitive against, how can we compete? Well, no, competing with, competing with uh, you know, Chinese uh, uh, labor camps and competing with Vietnam, where the average uh, income is $1,000 a year. Uh, that's going to be the kind of competition that's going to ruin the United States and make it impossible for Americans to survive. Clearly, guys, there's a lot to unpack with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. What do you feel is the scariest aspect of it? Yeah, I think the scariest thing is that if um, if a corporation wants to set up business in a country and uh, that country has a law that undermines expected profits, that corporation can sue the company, the country, to get those expected profits. So. You know, right now there's a case of a company in Delaware selling the Cana or suing the Canadian government for $250 million because they banned fracking, and this company wants to frack. What can, like, the average person do to help stop this? This is such an important issue, and I really urge people to go to the websites flushthetpp.org, citizenstrade.org. There's a lot more information to this. It's much more than a trade agreement, so please go to those websites. Thank you, guys. That was Margaret Flowers and Kevin Zeese, amazing activists and know-it-alls, apparently. There's still time to stop this. Check out the websites, tell your friends, although take it from me, don't give them French onion soup beforehand. I'm Lee Camp, and this is Moment of Clarity. So subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Twitter at Lee Camp, follow us on Facebook. Keep fighting.